Supreme understanding doing the video blog series 10 reasons to be a 5 percenter you know for once I'm a park um, before I do a blog instead of driving recklessly while I'm doing one um, this is all for, for uh, this book right here Knowledge of Self a collection of wisdom on the science of everything in life an anthology of uh, writings by you know 5 percent all over the globe and you know just to be clear 5 percenter is his name is popular with the majority of people that, that know who we are um, we don't necessarily always use that title so we gotta put that out there right now I'm gonna knock this out in one take cause I'm not really gonna try to edit and make this all flashy and fly which is why I just put the book cover up um, I'm just gonna send this shit straight to YouTube the number 9 reason number 10 was the network we're everywhere you know every world every city every area of business we do it all trying to make something happen you know at least you got a network with this um, number nine is real simple also no tithing no tithing you don't get no simpler than that now I'm not saying that like yo you can be a cheapskate little dirt bag and you don't got to you ain't got to give your money to a good cause no more now we, we give our money to causes we spend our time we you know we put in work we do for the community and that's that's the way we give back you know the religious model where you just give some money, put the money in the bucket. There's some problems with that. And I'm not going to criticize anybody's religion or things that you might that might sound familiar to your religion. Because I don't want to offend no, nobody. You know what I mean? Like, we're not here to offend people. You know, we're here to really introduce people to an elevated standard of thinking and living. And, and give you something, you know, a better way to go about doing things than what you may be used to. It ain't your fault if you got a way that don't work. Because, I mean, pretty sure you didn't get it. Like, on your own, you need to figure it out. You know, you got it from your parents. You got it from the influences around you and it um may have had an emotional appeal but once you get past the emotional appeal of it and you start looking at it in a logical way there's some really hard questions that come up and they're really hard to reconcile so i'm gonna start asking a couple of those starting with the simplest how do you know where the money's going you know i know that like the work that we do and the things that we do and the, where we spend our money like i spend i, I donate books to prison i um volunteer at a gang of events I haven't been able to do as much as I used to um I when I was 23 I had custody of a 15 year old uh, a 15 year old boy that was homeless you know what I mean like I took him in when I was 23 I'm young you know what I mean I'm taking in somebody you know and this is just the nature of what we do this is what our culture gives to us this is just the ideal that it gives to us you know um the thing about the putting the money in the bucket though is like how do you know where the money's going you know, if I do some work, I know who it's affecting. I know who it's impacting. And that's cool. So if your religion emphasizes charity over tithing and charity in terms of actually doing the work, that's different. But most religions I know of are just like, yo, just get the money. So where does the money go? Now, you do know that your preacher upgraded from a Ford Escort to a Bentley last week. But you may not be able to put two and two together to figure out how that happened. And you may be thinking, as he says, that he was just blessed by the Lord. For that to happen and it just came into his life um you may not know that you might have had a role in helping them go from the ford escort to the bentley um so i'm just going to help you try to understand that process because i'd hate for um you to think something is happening that's not really happening uh one simple test is if you want your money to go directly to god you take all your money in your hand you throw it in the air and however much god keeps and stays in the air and goes upward that's that's what he wanted and however much he sends back down to you down to the ground that's for you to use for what you need to do all right so that's a simple process to determine how much of your money to God in the sky wants um, if you're not interested in doing that I suggest you start looking honestly at um the religious industry you know religion is a billion dollar industry in America it's good for social control and it's also good for their economy you know um, it's hard to get people to understand this because they're like they you don't really commonly see um, religious leaders, which we don't we don't have leaders, so it's like we don't even have to worry about that. But for those of people those people that are religious, you have, you don't really have to see your leaders involved in financial scandals, um, like embezzling money or pocketing money, and that may give you the idea that they're not doing that. You know, you may see them in the pedophile situation. You know, um, last estimate was there, there were uh, over 4,500 cases of sexual abuse in the Catholic Church. 
and over a thousand documented cases of sexual abuse, um, usually involving children in the Protestant Church, which includes Baptists, Methodists, Episcopalians, and 99,000 other denominations. Um, but those are just documented. You know, in the Catholic Church, people started coming out after, you know, the first few cases got publicity. Protestant Church, you know, is not acceptable yet, you know, because they're more close-knit communities. Um, what does it have to do with anything? Well, that lets you know that, you know, religious leaders do have some issues, and they may not be as holy as you think they are. But why don't you see them, you know, basically messing up the money? Well, that's because they don't have to report to anybody. You don't know how much money they get. You can estimate it. Think about how many people there are in your congregation. Figure if everybody puts five dollars in the bucket, and figure out how many services there are in a given week, and then multiply that by the number of weeks in a year, and that will give you an idea how much money that church is making. And probably makes more than that because they probably do other things too, fundraisers and all kinds of stuff. Um, but they don't have to report it to the IRS or to anybody, so you have no idea how much is going to him, how much is going to his wife, how much is going to his uncle, how much you don't know where it's going. And that's unfortunate that we can be just so unquestioning of people that we see time and time again in the media, you know, beating their wives and blaming it on demons or, uh, you know, molesting children or, you know, like just all these crazy things that you can find at any given time. I mean, having, you know, gay sex and uh, uh, public places, like just all kinds of things. You know, I don't even want to go through the list, man. You could just, you could Google it. You know what I mean? Google, you know... I don't know, crazy religious leader behavior, and you'll probably find 99,000 results. Um, so with that being said, one of the highlights that I see in this coach is that it's not the no tithing part, in fact, it like is in terms of me not having to give 10% or whatever out of my income, because I actually give more than that, you know? I give a lot more than that. Supreme Design, my publishing company, we give away so much, it's like, it ain't, it ain't about money at the end of the day. I get money outside of Supreme Design Publishing. That's for the people. Um, but it's more so about the fact that we don't have to worry about that kind of corruption. You know, we don't have to give and not worry about who's doing what with what we gave. You know, can you imagine if you give to something thinking that it's going for the people and thinking it's going for the good of everybody and, and, and for, for, the, for the righteousness of the world... And really, do preachers spending your money at the strip club? I mean, seriously, because that's not unheard of. Matter of fact, I know some preachers. And, and I know a couple of preachers that have told me, that have told me, Yo, Supreme, you know, everything you're teaching is true, but ain't no money in it. I can't do that. You know what I mean? I, 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 I went this way and I can't look back. And that's real. Um, I don't want to get too deep into that, though. But just look around at your community. Is your religious organization really doing for the community like in your hood is the church the nicest building and everything else is the hood are there homeless people that sleep around the church area um that are there people that are unemployed all up and down the area uh, like you know like um do drug transactions happen in the same neighborhood as your church um those are indicators that your church may not be um allocating enough of their money or not even a church, any any religious organization may not be allocating enough of their money to uh, to the actual community. And you know, if at the end of the day, we're here for the people. You know, I mean, you can say it's going up to God, but um, I don't know how you write a check to God. You know, how do you do that? How do you write a check to the God in the sky? You know, the most you can do is do right for the people. And if you're not doing right for the people, and all you're doing is using that money to send missionaries to China, uh, something's wrong with your equation. But. I'm a 5%er. I ain't got to worry about that. Peace.